टुडे इन दिस लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस इन डिटेल द डैमिंग ऑफ ब्लड इन द वीन सिस्टम ऑफ द ह्यूमन बॉडी एंड एक्यूट पल्मोनरी एडिमा नाउ वी आर बेसिकली डिस्कसिंग कॉजेज ऑफ डेथ आफ्टर एक्यूट करनरी अक्लूजन वी हैव डिस्कस्ड वन इम्पॉर्टेंट कॉज ऑफ डेथ आफ्टर एक्यूट करनरी अक्लूजन एंड दैट इज कार्डियोजेनिक शॉक कार्डियोजेनिक शॉक we have discussed this in our last lecture today we are going to discuss acute pulmonary edema due to damming of blood in the venous system of the human body now suppose for example when acute coronary occlusion occurs for example this is the heart and one of the main blood vessel has developed a thrombus and acute coronary occlusion has occurred or acute myocardial infarction has occurred or a heart attack has occurred because the blood flow to a portion of the heart has stopped now this portion of the heart is become either non functional or it has died the muscle here either are non functional or they have died so the heart the heart will not be able to pump uh, properly the heart will not be able to pump the blood properly and which will lead to decreased cardiac output and cardiogenic shock that is one thing it is an important cause of death after acute coronary occlusion but another thing will happen because the normal function of the left ventricle the normal function of the sorry the right ventricle the normal function of the right ventricle is to pump the blood into the lungs so right ventricle is basically pumping the blood into the lungs and the left ventricle the left ventricle is basically pumping the blood into the whole of the body from the lungs the blood will return to the left atria from the lungs blood will return uh, return to the left atrium and from the left atrium the blood will go into the left ventricle the left ventricle will pump the blood into the body and the uh, the body will consume the oxygen nutrients and then the deoxygenated blood will return to the right atrium and then the right atrium the, from the right atrium blood go into the right ventricle and from the right ventricle blood goes into the lung now suppose for example a portion of the heart has uh, become non functional and it is not able to pump the blood properly what will happen is that if this uh, if this portion of the heart the, that has become non functional or uh, the muscles in that portion has died if that portion is on the left side on the left ventricle then the right ventricle will be able to pump the blood into the lungs the the blood will be going into the lungs and it will be damming there or pooling there or it will be collected there and if because the left ventricle will not be able to pump properly right ventricle will be able to pump the blood into the lungs but the the because the left ventricle has damaged and it is not uh, properly pumping the blood so the blood will not be properly returning and the more blood that goes into the lungs it will uh, start pooling there and if the damaged portion is on the right side if the damaged portion is on the right side then the left ventricle will be able to pump the blood into the body left ventricle will be able to pump blood into the body but is the right ventricle is not able to pump the blood out into the lungs so the blood the pressure of the blood to return will decrease and blood will start pooling in the body blood will start pooling in the body now initially when the acute coronary occlusion occur initially th this is not a problem but after the passage of some time the kidneys are due to decreased pressure due to decreased pressure due to decrease pressure the kidneys are not receiving enough blood so proper amount of urine is not formed because the heart is not able to pump proper amount of blood so the 
the pressure of the blood falls the the blood pressure falls and uh, shock develops due to which the blood flow to the kidneys also decreases and with the blood flow to kidney decreases the urine output also decreases so what happens is that the pooling of the blood or the fluid volume in the body starts increasing more and it starts increasing more especially in the lungs because the the capillaries in the lungs are such that the, with a slight increase in the pressure with the slight increase in the pressure of the capillaries in the lungs for example here we have the capillaries in the lungs now the pressure in the capillaries have have increased because blood is being coming uh, pumped into the lungs but it it is not being removed properly because this portion of the left ventricle is damaged so pressure here is increasing and the fluid is collecting or pooling or damming into the lungs and this condition leads to acute pulmonary edema this condition leads to acute pulmonary edema because this fluid is collecting in the alveoli now when the fluid is collecting into the alveoli patient will develop shortness of breath or dyspnea and may also develop orthopnea and what will happen that the saturation of oxygen will decrease because when a lot of fluid has collected in the lungs when a lot of fluid has collected in the lungs there will be no proper oxygenation there will be no proper oxygenation and it will further deteriorate the problem and it will further lead to more shortness of breath more orthopnea more dyspnea and further decrease in oxygen saturation and the this will lead to a vicious cycle and this will ultimately lead to death due to damming of blood or acute pulmonary edema now this damming of blood can also occur in the uh, peripheries or in the human body uh, especially when the right side of the heart has been damaged if the right side is damaged more then this will be uh, this pooling or this damming will occur in the peripheries edema will occur in the peripheries but if it is if the damage it is damage is more on the left side of the heart then the chances of acute pulmonary edema due to collection of fluid due to increased pressure due to increased hydrostatic pressure in the capillaries of the lung this will uh this will be more with the damage to the left side of the heart and this is an important cause of death after acute coronary occlusion because there will be no proper oxygenation there will be no proper oxygenation of the blood which is coming there because the lungs are uh the alveoli the alveoli which basically oxygenate the blood they are full of fluid they are full of fluid so there is no oxygenation saturation of oxygen falls and the, this ultimately lead to a vicious cycle and which ultimately leads to death now we are not going into detail at the molecular level but uh, we are just discussing or summarizing that what are the main causes of death after acute coronary occlusion so the one one more uh, one very important cause of death after acute coronary occlusion was cardiogenic shock that was because of the decreased cardiac output that was due to decreased cardiac output but another important reason is of death after acute coronary occlusion is acute pulmonary edema or damming of blood in the venous system of the human body and what is acute pulmonary edema it is due to the damage more to the left side of the heart which is not able to pump the proper uh, the amount of blood so the right ventricle is pumping blood into the lungs but because the left ventricle is damaged it cannot pump the blood so the blood starts uh, damming or pooling into the uh, lungs and it it leads to increased hydrostatic pressure in the capillaries of the lung and it leads to leakage of fluid from the uh, blood into the alveoli of the lungs and when there is increased fluid in the alveoli of the lung the oxygenation proper uh, uh, the oxygenation process of the there is no proper oxygenation of the hemoglobin of the blood and it leads to uh, decreased oxygenation increased shortness of breath increased dyspnea increased orthopnea and ultimately it it leads to death but if this damage is more on the right ventricle then what happens is 
the the damming or the pooling of blood is more in the peripheries as compared to the lung but once uh, there is pooling in the peripheries it leads to decreased blood supply to the kidneys as well and when there is decreased kidney supply to the kidneys uh, it leads to decreased decreased urinary output and when there is decreased uh, urinary output it may ultimately lead to fluid collection even in the lungs even with the right side damage of the heart so damage basically the kidneys are not themselves damaged but due to pooling or damming of blood the the due to decreased blood pressure the the blood flow to the kidneys decrease so the kidney starts conserving the fluid and the volume overload occurs and the volume basically is uh, more especially in the lung because the the capillaries and the structure of the lungs is such that it is very much prone to edema and uh, acute pulmonary edema in such condition is an important cause of death after acute coronary occlusion thanks a lot for watching the video